After waiting nearly 18 months, I went ahead and cut in front of the line. I got myself a Starlink RV receiver. How is it working in an area that's considered to be waitlisted by Starlink? Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So look what arrived in the mail today. Well, actually it'd be a FedEx. Got this yesterday, this is like a, a kit. This isn't so interesting. <laughs> this is like a mounting kit <laughs> for putting it in, digging a hole through the wall. And if you hear any dogs or anything or awkwardness, I am here completely by myself. So misinformation's gone, my kids are gone. So I'm having to do this myself. So it's gonna be slightly awkward, but I wanted to do an unboxing and then I'm going to do a setup and kind of go through some of the stuff about that. And then we will actually go ahead and uh, see about speed tests and stuff. I have, um, used to be called Charter, it's called Spectrum now, but anyway, that's what the uh, the other service that I currently have is. I'm not super satisfied with it, so hopefully this will work well. As a note, I am in what's called a waitlist area, so this is officially an RV version of it. It's a mobile, it's the exact same thing as the other one. You just pay more money per month to, to have it. So basically this is an RV version, but where I am, we're not officially part of the Starlink rollout yet, so I'll be interested to see. I know a bunch of friends who have Starlink but nobody is living in an area where they're not like allowed to use it, I guess. Not not allowed to use it, but anyway, they're on a wait list. So we'll see if the speed is actually better or worse considering where I am. Alrighty, here we go. So again, apologies. I really wish that I could had somebody else here to hold the camera for me. I do have this over here, so I'll use it in just a minute if I need to. But let's take a look. Always fun to see what the packaging looks like. So um, that's just a big old piece of plastic there. And uh, cool. But actually this box is quite a bit smaller and lighter than I thought it was going to be. So that's the number one observation. <clears throat> this would be the, uh, obviously the stand that it sits on. Let me uh, move it to the side here. Okay. And another piece of plastic. And then here is the dish. So this used to be, remember, this used to be the pizza box. Now it is a square. I don't want to pull it out too rapidly, but you can see it's got a white surface and some basic instructions and a cord there. <laughs> this is really hard to do with handed. <laughs> All right, don't want to damage anything, so hold on one second. All right, so anyway, some paper. And then we have a giant cable, which is still probably not gonna be long enough because I have to put it in a very weird place. And then this really elegant looking router that is really attractive looking. So very cool with the different satellite things and the SpaceX logo. So that will probably actually go over there someplace, assuming that I have enough cabling to make that all work. All right. So as far as I understand it, it's kind of like, set the whole thing up plug it in and go so i'm you know won't bother you with that stuff but i will come back after i've set it up and i'll talk about the the application the app that goes with starlink and how it tells you where to place the starlink dish and then how the setup goes so i'll see you in a minute all right so this is temporary this is my son's bedroom <laughs> sorry he's not here right now so what does he care so starlink receiver and then you can see it's about a 75 foot cable I've got it running out into the front yard. I really wanted to put it in the backyard, but unfortunately there's an app that you can use that will tell you, actually the Starlink app, will tell you where a good placement is and the backyard is bad. Actually the front yard is not particularly good either. So where I'm probably gonna have to mount it is up on that roof up there. <laughs> so the problem is that this cable is not nearly long enough to do that. So it'll be interesting to try to figure out Maybe they have an extender or something. So anyway, but the next step is going to be, I'm going to plug this in now. Since everything's hooked up, it's just one cable, super, super stupid easy. All right, so it's plugged in and hopefully it's doing something. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be moving yet, but maybe I have to hook it up to the Starlink app, which is gonna be a little complicated since I can't really film and use the app at the same time, but I will get back to you in a minute. All right, well, clearly it's doing something now. It was considered to be not great positioning here because of the house. This is all to the north, unfortunately, <laughs> which is all the places it actually needs to see. The south is totally clear, but that's probably why it's going on the roof up there because it'll have the best shot of getting over the trees. But anyway, it looks like it's doing some sort of startup routine. I'm not exactly sure what, but I'm gonna check back with the app. 
All right, so it's in like a 15 minute cycle. It doesn't appear that there are any power on lights or anything on the receiver. <laughs> Probably ought to dress this a little nicer. There we go. Anyway, it's very pretty. Um, it says it takes 15 minutes to acquire signal and GPS and all that stuff. As you do this, you can name your network whatever you want to. So before you get your Starlink, you should definitely think about a name. I'm calling mine Ursa Minor, as in M-I-N-E-R, as opposed to Ursa Minor, the constellation, because I thought it was cool because it was a constellation. Also, because it's a little bit of a shout out to Galaxy Quest, because they say minor, not minor. Okay. Could they be the miners? Oh, sure. I mean, they're like three years old. Miners, not miners. You lost me. And also, it's a Bitcoin miner, too. So there you go. <laughs> not that Starlink's actually a Bitcoin miner, but I thought the miner aspect was cool. So anyway, it should take about 15 minutes. It was, I mean, how simple was it? It was basically, I plugged it in. The thing moved around, found a position, looked straight up in the air, and said it was going to take a few minutes. The obstructions where it is right now is not fantastic. It's about 7% obstructed. So I don't expect to get the best service in the world, but I'm gonna have to like look at how to permanently mount this on the roof. But in the meantime, I'll just enjoy it as it is out in the front yard. <laughs> Hopefully nobody will come and steal it. That would not be so good. All right, well, it's working pretty well. It's a little bit slower than Spectrum, but that's not surprising, honestly, considering that that is cable wired, but you can see it's actually shifted. It was kind of more pointed like this away, but now it's shifted that way. And that's why I was saying it's unfortunate because <laughs> That happens to be right where all these big trees are, so it's not fantabulous. I might actually move it over a few feet, like maybe over here, maybe give it better luck. But anyway, the uh, the goal is going to be to put it up on the peak of that roof, probably, or maybe the chimney in the back. So anyway, pretty cool, and it's working, and it was like stupidly simple to set up, so that's really cool. All right, so here's a quick initial review. Obviously, I will do more testing over time, but the first thing is I did speed test, which is just speedtest.net. I did it on Charter, and I got 97.15 megabits per second download, 11.25 upload, and a ping of 18 milliseconds. On Starlink, I got 59.68 megabits per second, an upload of 4.95 megabits per second, and 84 milliseconds ping. So how does that stack up? Well, clearly Starlink isn't as good as Spectrum. Spectrum is full on cable fiber optics to the street. I don't think it is to our house, but anyway. So obviously it's got some advantages to it. The other thing I've found is that Starlink is clearly very varied. <laughs> it's very varied. So uh, sometimes it'll be fantastic. Other times you'll see it'll be much lower if I run speed test. It also is obviously slower on uplinks, although I'm going to make a point of uploading this video to YouTube on Starlink because Obviously, that's what I want to do. But on the good end of things, even though I just stuck it in the front yard and even though there's a bunch of obstructions, so it's like 8% obstructed from that area, so it's not really an ideal location, it seems to keep a really good connection. There's no problems with that. It's been very stable doing things like watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. I watched several of them just to test it. I like loaded five at the same time, <laughs> turned the sound off so it wouldn't drive me crazy. But I was curious. I was like, you know, how much will this thing actually load and will it work? And it seems to multiplex pretty well. It seems to download a bunch of things. I haven't tried connecting 20 different devices to it yet. I've only connected three to it thus far. But anyway, it seems to be working really, really well. Is it going to be a replacement for Spectrum? I don't think the RV version will. Number one, the RV version is considered lower priority. So what happens is if it gets congested, if there's a bunch of people using Starlink, it will actually de-emphasize my particular receiver because it's the RV receiver. So it's considered to be kind of a mobile device and it's out there and it's okay if it doesn't work you know as speedily as other ones do so the rv version is not the one that i would choose to use to replace spectrum eventually of course our waitlisted area will be included and i've got a hundred dollar deposit in for basically the same device just a different account but it will be using the real account and so it will have more, more priority when it actually gets congested and things like that so at that point i will actually suspend the service on the rv version of the starlink dish and i will only use it for road trips and stuff like that, but I will use the other one in a more permanent sort of manner. The good part about this is that once I find a good mounting point for all of this stuff, it's really easy. You basically just push a button, pop it out of the pole, you know, click it back in again, and so it's all set. There's not really any crazy stuff that you have to do to be able to change things over. And speaking of waitlisted areas, it's kind of interesting because I've sort of jumped ahead of the line. I'm in the northeastern part of Georgia, and the whole state pretty much, except for a little chunk in the bottom, like southeast corner or something like that, 
is all wait listed. It means that Starlink isn't ready to roll here. They don't have enough satellites. They don't have them in the right part of the orbits, the inclinations, and it's generally speaking probably too crowded in the northeast part. Even though I don't live in Atlanta, I live close to Atlanta. And so if you had, you know, a million people in Atlanta using Starlink, that would be a pretty heavy duty stuff. So anyway, so it's interesting that I'm getting as good a service as I am considering I'm in an area that's considered to be waitlisted and I'm using a de-emphasized, you know, RV version of Starlink. So both of those things together make it really interesting that I'm still getting what I consider to be very, very good reception and very good speeds for uploads and downloads. So all of that is very, very positive. Will I be canceling my Spectrum service? That is the, you know, the $64,000 question, or I guess <laughs> the multi-hundred dollar question, because obviously if I keep both services over the course of the year, it'll be well over $1,000 to keep both services for the year. So I think I can't make that decision yet. I'm going to have to use Starlink for, you know, at least a week or two and kind of suss out how consistently it stays connected, whether there are times that it drops service, whether it becomes annoying. One thing I will tell you so far is even though it's got officially slower speeds in terms of download and upload, generally speaking, if like I load a Google search for images or something like that, they're very slow to load on Spectrum and on Starlink, they're much, much faster. So I feel like there is some advantage to Starlink, even though the statistics say it's not quite as good. It seems like it actually is doing better in terms of real world performance. So again, we're just going to have to wait a week or so to try to figure this out. So I will do another video on this topic later after I've had a chance to upload and download some large files and test it out and compare things and maybe set up two laptops together and like, you know, go click and like start downloading and uploading files and see who wins in the real world. So I'll I'll do all of that stuff later. But my initial thoughts are, number one, Starlink is ridiculously simple to set up. I mean, basically, it's like you plug it in and you go onto the app and you say set up and you name your network and that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. It moves itself around. The phased array antenna is really fantastic. It's a great piece of technology. And I do have like an AR augmented reality app on my phone so I can look up and see the satellites. It's really cool. They move really fast across the sky. So it's very impressive that Starlink is able to hold on to those signals as they're moving so quickly. Anyway, except for the awkwardness of the cabling and having to put it in the front yard as opposed to in the backyard, I'm very pleased with Starlink so far. And of course, I'll do a further, much more in-depth review later on after I've had a chance to use it for a while. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. And actually, a lot of the people on Patreon were the ones who suggested I go ahead and get the RV version and sort of jump in line. And they were like, why not test it out? Anyway, this one's partially for all of you guys. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla Bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we're both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.